So now we've uh, established that we can think of a particle model of light, we can think of light as being made of photons, we can start to look at line spectra. Um, this is to do with how an atom produces a spectrum of light and then we're going to look at the wavelengths of the emitted radiation and how that's to do with the energy levels in atoms that you've talked about uh, in chemistry and GCSE. So here's our diagram of an atom, here's the nucleus, here's our different shells. Um, you'll have talked in chemistry about how there are different numbers of electrons allowed in these shells, but your diagram for hydrogen will always just have been one electron going around in the first shell. If any chemistry teacher asks you about the electronic configuration of hydrogen, you just say there's one electron in the first shell. Okay, what we need to understand is we've got, first of all, we've got another way of drawing this diagram. So rather than drawing all these circles, which is a bit tricky, all we do is we say, here's the first shell, here's its energy. So as the electrons fall on into the atom to, to form this uh, neutral atom, the energy released here is minus 22 times 10 to minus 19 joules. Okay, so in order to take that electron off there, I would have to give it this much energy. Okay, but there's another shell it could be in. So although this is what we call the ground state, the lowest energy state it could be in, if we gave that electron some energy, it could be in this state here with this energy. Or it could be in the third shell, or the fourth shell, or even up in the fifth shell. Okay, and actually there's an infinite number of possible shells that it could be in here. Okay, but here's five. So if you see a diagram like this with these lines, actually what it's representing is this idea that there are all these different shells. This one we call the first shell or the ground state. Okay, here's our excited states. So if the electron's in here, that's not the normal state it could be in. We've got to do something to get it there. And also it might well fall back. Okay, so here's our new model of how an atom works. Okay. So the question is, how does it get into that excited state? How is it that an electron going there might be excited? Just play that again. Well, what happens is, one way of doing it is an electron collides with it. So here's an electron. That electron sort of bounces off this when it collides with it, and it knocks it up into this excited shell. So what we've got there is the, the electron that's coming in, what we call the bombarding electron, must hit this electron which we call the orbital electron just so we know which one's which obviously these electrons if we could take them away and have a look at them they'd look exactly the same but if we call this one the orbital electron and this one the bombarding electron the bombarding electron must have enough energy to knock this up so there's a minimum energy that it must have but it doesn't matter how much energy it's got as long as it's more than the minimum because it will be it will just lose the relevant amount of energy to knock this one up into a higher state Okay, so that's one way of exciting an atom. Another way of exciting an atom is to collide a photon with it, but the key difference here is the photon ha is absorbed. There isn't another photon that comes out afterwards. So the photon's got to have exactly the right amount of energy. Okay, not just more energy than it takes, but exactly the right amount. Okay, so what that means is if you shine white light at a hydrogen atom, only certain energies are absorbed. Okay, we'll come back and have a look at this spectrum in a minute. So the next question is, what happens if once the electron is excited? Well, after a short time, it will de-excite back to the lower energy level. Okay, and it might go all the way back to the ground state in one go, or it might do it in a number of steps. And what you need to be able to do is to calculate the wavelengths of the photons that will be produced in that process. So here's our energy levels again in a hydrogen atom. Here's our electron, it's currently in this shell, the third shell, or what's sometimes called the second excited state. So we've got ground state, first excited state, second excited state, or sometimes is it just called first shell, second shell, third shell. Okay, what's it going to do when it's there? It's going to fall back. It might just fall back from this state n equals 3 to this state n equals 2, the third shell to the second shell. When it does that, it will release a photon. We need to work out the wavelength of this photon. Well, the energy we know, so, so we do the difference in the two energies there, it's fallen from minus 2.2 times 10 to the minus 19 to minus 5.4. Okay, that's a difference of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we know the energy of the photon. Once we do the energy, we can work out the frequency from F equals E over H. So I'll take that energy divided by the Planck constant and I get frequency. And then just like before, we do the wavelength is the speed divided by the frequency. Speed is always the speed of light. Divide that by the frequency, we get 6.2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. 
usually these are expressed in nanometers, so 621 nanometers. Little clue for you there. Um, when electrons are falling back into the second shell of hydrogen, these are visible uh, photons. This is inside the wavelengths of visible light, 400 to 700 nanometers. Okay, here's a second example just to see. So if it's up in here in the fourth shell and it falls down into the second shell, that's a bigger energy gap. Okay, so the energy gap is now 4 times 10 to the minus 19 joules from 1.4 down to 5.4. Just, just the same calculation, here's the frequency, and this gives us 497 nanometers up the blue end of the spectrum. Okay, one more example from the fifth shell down to the second shell, even more energy, and that gives us 436 nanometers, we're right down towards the violet end of the spectrum there. Okay, so that will give you a set of lines, here's the lines we've just looked at. Okay, this is called an emission spectrum. So if we've excited the atoms, then what they give us is an emission spectrum, and we only see these particular lines. Okay, this is really useful for identifying elements because this pattern of lines is associated with a single kind of atom. And in chemistry, you might get, say, his calcium emission spectrum. Okay, so when you do a flame test, the reason the flame is that colour is that you've only got these particular lines coming out. Obviously, colour is quite complicated because your eye can't distinguish these lines when you see the whole lot, so you've got to work out what colour that's going to be altogether. All right, but um, if you could put that through an analyzer, it would tell you exactly what the element was. Okay, just going back to the absorption spectrum, so if you shine the white light through the gas, the only photons that are going to be um, absorbed are ones with the exact energy. So not extra energy, it's got to be exactly the right amount of energy. Okay. So what that means is, if you would have got this emission spectrum, when you shine white light through, you get this absorption spectrum. So see, we've got, we shine white light through, and we get black lines where those photons have been absorbed, and they have the same energy of these emission lines, because this is when it goes from shell 3 to shell 2, and this is when it goes from shell 2 to shell 3. So this is coming down, de-exciting. This is going up, exciting. Okay, just a quick review. So what's meant by an excited state is that the electron is above the ground state. Any shell above the ground state, n equals 1. How can it come be become excited? So two ways. It collides with an electron which has got more than the energy gap between the shells. Or it absorbs a photon with exactly the same amount of energy as the energy gap between the shells. The absorption spectrums um, produced by white light, which has got a full range of wavelengths, but specific wavelengths have the specific energies which are absorbed, so that leaves dark lines or gaps in the spectrum. And the emission spectrum is formed when you've already excited the atom, and they de-excite, which means they fall back to a lower energy shell, and they release photons of specific energy, which means, of course, specific energy means a specific wavelength.